You were trying to say that that bottle would last two years. After you tell your significant other that he's eh, Bruce Springsteen or <laughs> One, she didn't ask. Two, is not going to improve your relationship in any way, shape, or form. Episode two, babe. Did we get any of the uh, transitions all done? No. All right, so I got to do the sound effects again? Sure. <laughs> now you got to say... Why would you put butter on a monkey? Why wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I don't like though? Not being in the saloon. Um, yeah, this is weird. This remote stuff is for the birds. Yeah, well, you know, if we can just get someone to pay us a whole bunch of money, we wouldn't have this problem. What do you mean? You know, you get somebody to pay us a whole bunch of money and then you don't have to, you know, work remotely and, and we don't have this problem. Do you want me home all the time? No. <laughs> Sorry. That came out way too fast. Oh, God. <laughs> I ordered Jackson Morgan Southern Cream. This stuff is made in Tennessee. Now, the company itself started in 1921, and it started with only moonshine. So the grandfather started it, the son has it, and now uh, the grandkids are actually running it. And their names are Jackson and Morgan. How cute. The cream itself does not, this is a little bit like rum chata. It does not need to be refrigerated. Um, and it will last for about two years. In this house, it will last for about three days. I am, I just got it yesterday. You read my mind because I thought you were trying to say that that bottle would last two years. It will not. And it will not. Okay, so if they have it in lemon, salted caramel, pumpkin, Everybody raves about the banana pudding, so that probably will be the next one that we get. Peaches and cream, peppermint mocha. And then the last one is brown sugar and cinnamon. Okay, I approve of the brown sugar cinnamon because that's my favorite oatmeal. Well, I mean, it's the best Pop-Tart. Mm. It's the best Pop-Tart. Cheers to Jackson Morgan, that was really good. Southern banana pudding martini. Did you get some Nilla wafers? This came from Sherry Price. Like cherry. Yeah, a little smoky banana cream pudding moonshine. Just making me drool. Half an ounce of amaretto. Can't go wrong with this one. Half an ounce of vanilla vodka. I swear vanilla vodka is simply there to bring up the alcohol content. You can top this with whipped cream if you'd like. I'm going to let you choose to, to do that for your own drink because, you know, when I do the whipped cream, it gets everywhere. Oh, man. Are you happy about this? I'm going to be. Oh, I don't know what makes it Southern, but... It's not super sweet. I already got diabetes. <laughs> I don't even know what apology language you would use after you tell your significant other that he's... Eh. <laughs> they were getting ready for uh, playtime. The, they were a little bit drunk. Girl was actually just a little bit high. Guy was drunk. And um, and guy was like, hey, check out my package. What do you think? It, not that she hadn't seen it before they're married. Um, and she was like, eh, it's okay. And, um, and he was all upset. And r rightfully so, he was upset. And he was just kind of down and kind of depressed for a couple of days. And the girl was like, I don't know what to do. I don't, I didn't, I didn't mean it that way. I just, it was a poor choice of words. I didn't mean to say it like that. And, uh, and so she was like, how do I, how, like, how do I get him to, to break out of this like depression that he's now in? Because, you know, I said something stupid. And one of the responses was, what's his apology language because i'd never heard of an apology language before so i'm gonna tell you what they are there's five of them real quick there's expressing regret which is just basically saying i'm sorry um and then kind of acknowledging that you hurt someone's feelings and being like look i'm sorry i didn't mean it that way whatever right okay then you have accepting responsibility 
which is like, hey, uh, I know I messed up. I know I did this wrong, um, you know, and, and kind of being like, look, I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to make that happen again. Like, I won't make that mistake again. Right. Then you have making restitution, which is like, hey, what can I do to make it up for you? Like, make it up to you. You have genuinely repenting, which uh, involves the promise to change and avoid repeating the mistake. And then you have requesting forgiveness, which is literally like asking, like, can we can we move on from this? Like, I'm really sorry. Do you forgive me? Like, can we move on? And they were like, you got to figure out what his apology language is. And I'm just going through this list and trying to figure out, like, I don't even know what apology language you would use after you tell your significant other that he's eh. <laughs> eh. I mean it's eh. how do you what can you say or do I, to me yeah, I, I got nothing on that I don't I have <laughs> no idea what the answer to that the, the, the apology language with that I don't know <laughs> I'm eh. not. This is the brown cow from Jennifer Butcher. Oh, yeah. oh yes. One ounce of Shanky's Whip. One ounce of root beer soda jerk. Big fan. One ounce of bourbon cream. Okay, this is the Bowman bourbon cream. This has a little bit more um, like caramel flavor to it. It so, which should mix with the root beer, though. I think it's going to make it good. Top with root beer. It's super foamy. It smells amazing. This is Brown Cow from Jennifer Butcher. Thank you, Jennifer. <sighs> Moo. That's super balanced too. Nothing really stands out. I even feel like the root beer doesn't stand out. It just kind of melts in with the shankies. And then I'm getting a little bit of the caramel from the bourbon cream that we used. Like this is... I almost wish we didn't add the caramel bourbon cream and just went with the regular bourbon cream because mm. I'm with you. I don't think you should taste the caramel, but it doesn't mess it up. It's no, really it's, good. this is amazing. Thank you. Whose poster? Did you have on your wall as a kid? Okay, um, so I can't answer this question because it's an inappropriate poster. Um, Why it not? Behind, what? It was behind my door. Okay, I'll be fair. I was like 12, 13, and I really didn't know the girl's name, but she, she, I won the poster at the New York State Fair at one of those booths where you like pop the balloons or whatever. You could land it in the star and you get enough and you get to choose what you had and they always had like posters you could win so i picked a poster with a girl with a, like a cheetah bikini thing on okay you're a teenage boy that's fine that's i'm gonna <clears throat> okay i'm gonna give you some of the answers that we got because i didn't have very many posters on my wall um because i couldn't get teen beat magazine like that wasn't a thing I got I got I got it after it had been out in the rain and and run over by a few cars. You know, I got it after the celebrities that were in like Teen Beat magazine were no longer celebrities. Like that's when I got those posters. So I didn't I didn't, I didn't have posters. So you're saying you're saying you got the ones that the store was throwing away from last year that you Yeah. 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 Like, but, you know, in, in 19, in 19, you know, 95, I could get a poster of, I don't know, Bruce Springsteen. Or <laughs> I can't with you. Did you say Bruce Springsteen? I did, Bruce Springsteen. Okay. I know it's Springsteen. <laughs> Or like, or like Donny Osmond. I could get them in 1995. <laughs> the Partridge Family. That's when I could get good posters. Oh my god. Um, I I love a lot of these answers because it shows that our 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 followers are about our age. Um, so Nuke is on the block. Corey Heim and Corey Feldman. Um, Kurt Cameron. 
was on this list. And this is one that really surprised me. Duran Duran. I couldn't tell you what Duran Duran looked like if I if I tried. I have no idea what they look like. Not a clue. So I'm going to I'm going to have to find some poster. I don't know. Um Tom Selleck uh, from Magnum PI. The mustache is still epic. I mean, <laughs> I would I would have that poster. <laughs> Debbie Gibson. Um Deborah. So if you're going to say Debbie Deborah. Gibson Deborah now, yes. Debbie Gibson, if you're going to say her, then you got to say Tiffany because, you know, they were rivalry, rivals, although they actually weren't. Um, Scott Bayo. That was Charles in Charge, right? Yeah, and if you're going to say Scott Bayo, then you got to say Alyssa Milano. Eh, see, I was an Alyssa Milano fan. No? Okay. Yeah. Um, Brad Pitt from Legends of the Fall. Your sister had that on her wall. Who? Oh, Legends of the Fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brad Pitt. Um, Michael Jackson and Prince, of course, Joy. Um, Marilyn Manson. You gotta think in the early to mid nineties, Marilyn Manson was Yeah, I know, huge. but I think he would scare me if I woke up and he was like over my bed. Like that's not he, that'd be terrifying to wake up to Marilyn Manson. Babe, that was the that Middle school and high school for us was the period where people were wearing black everything, nail polish, emo. everything. I mean, it was the, the emos. The yeah. start of that goth punk era. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, Farrah Fawcett. One of the guys. Okay. Farrah okay. Fawcett. Um, yeah, was, the hair bands. Huh? I was more Suzanne Summers. I wasn't Farrah Fawcett. Like, I was more Suzanne Summers. Because really? the Thighmaster commercials, man. <laughs> Okay. All right. Then we got the hair bands, Bon Jovi, Motley Crue, Poison, Skid Row, mm -hmm. duh. Um, Pam Anderson in the Baywatch bikini or the Baywatch yeah. swimsuit. Yeah. Um, you had Salt and Pepper and Little Kim. For me, my dream poster was all of the members of New Edition. Let me put on my surprise face. <laughs> What? Um, a lot of people said WWE wrestlers, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Michael Jordan. Okay, MJ makes sense. So I, I agree. Like, those all make sense. But were there any, like, that surprised you? Well, I didn't write down the ones that surprised me. I oh. actually... I, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't write down the ones that surprised me. It could be because this just kind of took me down memory lane. Um... I was thinking about ones that maybe weren't on the list. And for some reason, the one that came to me was my uncle. Um, my uncle used to play or, and still actually plays drums, my uncle Kevin. Um, and when you went into his room, his drum set was right in front of the door. And behind him was a poster of Samantha Fox. I vividly remember this poster. Do you know who Samantha Fox was? This, I I'll let you I can't picture that. it. I can't picture I'll, it. Yeah, I'll let you look that up because I think she started as a Playboy bunny and then she went into music. Okay. But I, I mean, remember I'll, seeing I'll, that poster. Yeah, I'll look it up. I'll do some research. Yeah, you, go ahead. Yeah, look for it. You ready for a cherry Tootsie Pop? Yeah. This came to us from Dana Johnson. This is going to be an interesting one. Two ounces of light rum. One ounce of creme de cacao. Okay, so we got rum and chocolate. Six ounces of Coke Zero. Rum, chocolate, and Coke. One ounce of grenadine. This is a cherry tussy pop from Dana Johnson. Thank you, Dana. Cheers. That's, that's so good. Wow. The well chocolate done. though does taste like the inside of the tussy pop. Yeah. Mm. Super duper sweet, but really good. Try that one, guys. Dana Johnson coming through. Okay, I have a story for you. For me? Wait. Yeah. You want to hear All it? Right. There it goes. Okay, so here's the story. This this guy and this girl got together, um, of course, online via Hinge, right? And they're still together. They have a great relationship. They've been together for like six months or something like that. I don't know. So they're kind of, they're, they're cuddling up on the couch or something is happening and they are rehashing how they met. Um, and 
he he let slip that she was not the one that he was trying to swipe to to connect with. They have a great no, they have a great relationship, but he has for some reason just told her that he did not mean to swipe to her to connect on Hinge. And now her feelings are all hurt. And he wants to know how to make it better or if she's overreacting. Well, I have questions. Did she ask him about his experience on Hinge or the no. dating website or whatever? So No, they were just talking about just like you and I do. They were just talking about how they how they met, like what connected them. Okay. And he just felt that he needed to let her know that she wasn't the one that he was actually going for. Okay. Sorry, my camera is going all crazy right now. Sorry. Um, so, all right. So, un, un, unprovoked, he just said, hey, I didn't mean to swipe on you. And then did he say anything after that? Or is it just that's how it ended? He just said, I, you weren't the one that, that I meant to swipe to. Um, but he did say that he was, what are you doing? My phone is going to fall over. I'm sorry, babe. I'm doing the best I can. Oh. Um, he I don't did have a say, stand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, he did say that he was happy that they connected, but he, why, why would he tell her that? I have no idea. I don't understand. If she didn't ask you a question, then why are you giving an answer to a question that doesn't, one, she didn't ask, two, is not going to improve your relationship in any way, shape, or form. Like, I, I don't, I have no idea why he would answer, why, 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 why volunteer that information? It doesn't, it had no bearing on how they met or their life before or their life after it. Like, what, what is the point? I think it was just really, I think it was really hurtful. Look, yeah. this is probably something that she needs to like. She's gonna have to get over, obviously. Um, but yeah, I like he hurt her feelings. He's like, oh yeah, what? yeah. I, what she's was got, the point of telling her? Yeah, she's got several days, weeks, of months, even of really guilting him into whatever she wants. You know, she's a manipulative person. She could, she could probably get some stuff out of him. I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think that was the case, but I don't think that's what she wanted to do, but. I mean, how bad does he really feel? <laughs> I think the lesson here is think before you speak. I'm not saying, yeah. okay. So I was reading through some of the responses to the, to the story because it just kind of summarized the story, but I was reading through some of the responses to the story and people were like, oh, you, you lied. You, he didn't though. I don't I don't think it's lying. I I think he just is not forthcoming with all of the details. Cause he's I mean, it's not a detail that like affects them, right? It's not a detail that's like, oh, she really needs to know. You know, I don't know, like or or maybe he was just trying to say, like, hey, fate brought us together or something, and it just came yeah. out. Just say that. I didn't want to. Just say that though. Don't say, "Oh, hey, I didn't mean to, to to click on you. I was I was looking at the girl next to you." Or I mean, like, what is the point? And then, what if he had been on three or four hinge dates that day? I mean, do you tell her about the other ones since you're you know being so open kimono? I mean, no. so forthcoming. Right? Like, what's the point? Why? I don't right, know. That's that's I don't weird. know. Yeah. So think before you speak, I think is the moral of this story. Like uh, there are some things that really should be disclosed in a relationship. And there are some things that maybe we don't need to tell. Yeah. Every time you or I like start to say something stupid, we normally have a filter or we'll be like thought bubble. That's supposed to be a thought bubble. Yeah. Don't say that out loud. But they're new. Their relationship is really new. Ours is ours is not new. I have to be careful how I say it because I don't want people yelling at me again. But ours is not new. We've learned how to communicate with each other. So on Wednesday nights, sometime between 8 and 8.30, we'll be on doing bar banter. 
What you can expect with bar, bar banter is an introduction to a new bottle, if we have one for the week, which we likely do, because Dave can't stay out of the liquor store. You'll get a cocktail from us, and then we're going to break away from that. And we're going to talk about some other things that have been kind of on our minds. So it could be uh, the question of the day from Facebook. If you look at Facebook at 9 o'clock in the morning, almost every day of the week, I post a question of the day. And if you respond, you might find yourself on bar banter. Um, people think it's pretty cool that we've been married for so long, and so they want to ask us lots of questions. Feel free, ask us whatever it is you want to ask. We might answer it, we might not. We might be like, y'all need to mind your business. But either way, send us some questions. Bar banter is meant to lift you up and make you laugh, not bring you down. You're gonna to wanna to watch it. Do you wanna add anything to that, David? I didn't think so. I didn't think so. <laughs>